pray, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again, Panginoon, for these days na kahit, Lord, in spite of the things happening around us, we still have the chance, Lord God, to increase in our learning, to learn from your words, to be directed by your book. And Lord, thank you, Lord, sa mga resources at sa mga bagay na natututunan namin, Lord. At uh, this, will, this will continue to equip us, Panginoon, and to improve our own studies in, in your holy words so that, Lord, we could grow in the knowledge and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bless this day, Panginoon, for us. Bless this for everyone who wants to learn this and maybe give back all the glory back to our dear, loving Savior, Jesus. Amen. Alright, let's go to the fifth one. So, this fifth law of interpretation or law of hermeneutics is tinawag pong law of subsequently added details. So, from the words itself, no, sinasabi niya, nag add ka ng details subsequently or sunod-sunod. What does this tell you? <clears throat> For example, you have Genesis chapter 1. And I believe every one of you have read that part. You will notice a Genesis chapter 1. Walang ibang na-mention doon about sa, sa mga details patungkol sa earth. You will just, you will just uh, see some areas na sinasabi yung gawa yung stars, nagawa yung galaxy, the earth is formed from nothing. Until nung pumunta ka sa Genesis chapter 2, makikita mo doon, yung mga creation or yung creation itself is done in details. Alright? So, that's a very basic thing na napag-uusapan dyan sa law of subsequently added details. There is this ano kasi, no? Uh, merong mga critics or may mga scholars na ang ginagawa ganito. Just because hindi nila ma-interpret yung isang passage o kaya isang chapter, ang ginagawa nila, binabago nila yung author. Hindi nila ma-reconcile yung dalawang chapter na yun. So what they do is that instead of giving one author for Genesis chapter 1 and 2, what they do is they try to create <laughs> this parang imaginary imaginary author. No? Magkaiba daw yung author ng Genesis chapter 1 saka Genesis chapter 2. So, nagkaroon sila syempre ng mess doon. They had to do two chapters written by two authors na pinut together nila by the, by the thing called redactor. So, hindi na tayo masyado mag-dwell into details dyan. Pero obviously, ang sinasabi po ng, ng, ng Bible, ang author po ng Genesis is none other than Moses. ba? So, Luke 24, 44, He said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, and all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses. Ang law of Moses in yung five books, ba? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. So, it's obvious that isa lang author ng book of uh, Genesis, which is si Moses nga. And eto nga, eventually, mapapansin nyo, unti-unti na nagkakaroon ng light or details yung interpretation or yung creation itself. As you go chapter by chapter. Okay? All written by Moses, no doubt about no no doubt about that. And bigyan ko pa kayo na iba pang sample. Now, if you go further sa Genesis, ano, you will find this man named Enoch. Si Enoch po, if you will if you will read Genesis, you have no idea, no. Sabi nating Genesis lang nabasa mo. First time mo nabasa ang Bible, Genesis pa lang inuna mo. You will have no idea that this man is actually a prophet. Alam mo lang prophet siya when you go further sa iba pang mga books. Now, titingnan mo yung Genesis. Buong chapter ng chapter 4, kung saan siya first na-mention, hanggang doon ka sa chapter 5, walang na-mention po dyan. Na siya po ay isang prophet. Okay, you just know that, that Enoch was somehow parang na-rapture. Actually, wala kang nga dapat idea dyan. Kung first time mo na, na encounter si Enoch or first time mo na encounter Bible, nabasa mo si Enoch sa Genesis lang, wala kang idea na parang ang picture nito ay rapture, not until pumunta ka sa New Testament. Now, ito pa isa kong point. No? Hindi mo alam na prophet siya until sa Jude 1, 14 to 15. Okay? So, dito na banggit na Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied these things saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have commit ungodly committed. 
and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Notice, si Enoch ngayon na mention ng book of Jude, a different author, that he was a prophet. So he prophesied, obviously, he's a prophet. But again, ano, in, book, in the book of Genesis, there is no indication na siya po ay isang prophet. So there you go. There is a law of subsequent added details. There are things mentioned in the in the book of Genesis, which is the first book of the Bible, sa by order, no, by sequence, na hindi po clearly na mentioned agad lahat ng details. All right. There are two authors, Moses and Jude. It took two authors for you to understand that uh, this uh, this guy named Enoch is actually a um, a prophet. There's another story, no? Hindi ko na, I think hindi ko na nalagay nun sa, ah, ito, nalagay ako siya slide. So, ito, si, si Abraham, alam nyo ba, pag binabasa nyo yung story ni Abraham, this is one of the, my, one of my favorite stories in the Bible, no? Nung inoffer na si Isaac. You will find there na inoffer niya si Isaac. Ba? And in Genesis chapter 22, do na mention yung mismong instance na yun. Let's look at Genesis 22. Jump ka tayo sa verse 28. Oops. Genesis 22 verse 8. So, here, let's cut the story short. Dinala niya si Isaac sa isa Mount Moriah and then dun sa Mount Moriah. Dala-dala lang niya ay wood. At kasama niya ang kanyang anak. In fact, si Isaac, tinanong niya to sa tatay niya. Ito ang tanong niya sa verse 7. Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, he said, Here am I, my son, sabi ni Abraham. And he said, Isaac, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Nagtataka, alam na niya kasi na kapag nag-offer ka sa Panginoon nung panahon na yan, they will need a lamb. They will need, they will need an animal to offer. So, he saw the wood, he saw the fire, but there's no lamb. Now, si Abraham, etong sagot niya, verse 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will himself, or God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. From reading this verse, you will think, no, reading the whole chapter, you will think, na alam ni Abraham na may biglang susulpot na na lamb. ba? Alam natin yan, nung, nung, nung binasa mo yung buong story, ah, may biglang sumulpot na lamb nung papatay na niya, dapat si Isaac. Okay? Nakita niya na nakasabit dun sa, sa isang puno sa likod niya. But that, that's not actually in the mind of Abraham. Not until mabasa mo ang book of Hebrews. Alam nyo ba, ang alam ni Abraham, hindi magbibigay o magpo-provide ang Diyos ng lamb. Ang ibig niya sabihin talaga doon, ang po-provide ng lamb is yung anak niya talaga. Dahil yun ang inuto sa kanya. Pero in Hebrews, oops, sorry, Hebrews 11, verse 17, etong nasa isip niya. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, kung sinubok siya doon, sa story na yun, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Alam niya tong promise na to, no? He had faith on this promise. Pero ito'y nasa isip niya. Verse 19. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. From whence also he received him a figure. So nakita niya, ang Easy pala ni Abraham, kahit patay niya, talagang dead, ano na siya, uh, uh, tawag dito, determined na siya na patayin si Isaac. Kasi alam niya, sa isip niya, kayang buhayin uli ni God. Remember, in the Old Testament, uh, wala pa silang idea about sa notion ng afterlife. In fact, si Solomon, na nakwento ko doon sa mga previous discussion, walang idea si Solomon about the second life. Kaya sinabi niya sa, sa book of Ecclesiastes na wala nakakaalam pag ikaw ay namatay. Pero ako alam ko. No, ikaw alam mo. Kasi you've read the New Testament. Just like Abraham, all they know is that kapag ikaw ay namatay, ikaw ay mabubuhay uli physically. As in, mabubuhay ka uli literal, physically. That's their 
idea about uh, kumbaga, uh, parang life na nabuhay ulit. So, yan. Added details. Subsequently, added details. It took Hebrews, who's the author, ang author is si Paul, para maintindihan mo ang nangyari talaga storya doon sa Genesis with regard kay Abraham. Right? So, it took Moses and Paul for you to understand that story. Now, here's a, here's a thought. You must remember this. Never interpret a clear passage by an unclear passage or a complete passage by an incomplete passage. Para sabihin natin, common sense lang naman, di ba? Alam nyo guys, ginagawa kasi ito ng mga, ng mga kulto, let me say that. Ginagawa ito ng mga, mga, mga false teachers, false prophet. They try to, to build a whole foundation of a simple verse interpreting it without considering other verses na mas kompleto. Always interpret the incomplete or unclear by the complete and clear. Okay? Remember that. Remember that. That's the law of subsequently added details. Etong sample. Sa mga naniniwala na hindi ka na dap, oh, walang walang divorce talaga, no? They believe that there's no divorce at all. Pangalanan na natin, for example, ang mga, ang, ang, ang Catholic, hindi talaga sila naniniwala sa divorce. In fact, they don't want to have divorce in, in the countries na sila dominated. Ang sabi ng Luke 16, 18, Whosoever put it away his wife and marrieth another committed adultery. So, pag ikaw daw, ay tinanggal, inalis mo yung asawa mo at nagpakasal ka sa iba, adultery na yun. Tinanong din niya ng mga Pharisees kay Jesus Christ, Can I put away my wife for any cause? Para kasi tinitempt nila si Jesus noon na magsalita. Okay. Now, you must realize that Luke 16, 18 is an incomplete statement. Why? Because if you look at another verse, alright, which is a complete statement, it tells this, And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committed adultery. This tells you na, except for fornication, kung nag-commit ng fornication yung, yung asawa, then it is a ground for divorce. You understand? So, you commit adultery kapag inalis mo yung wife mo na hindi naman nag-commit ng fornication. But, if they commit fornication, which is a ground for divorce, then, uh, pwede mo siyang, pwede ka mag-marry uli ng another wife. Hindi ka nag-adultery. Right? So, uh, actually, there's another topic for this. I think I had my own Bible study with that na grounds ng divorce. It's a marriage, no? About marriage. So, merong three grounds of divorce yun. Okay? Yung death, na namatay, fornication, uh, meron ka ng asawan, uh, nakiapid ka pa, saka yung desertion, iniwan ka. So, yun, it was tackled on another Bible study. You can check that out. So, here's, here's a sample lang no, that I'm just showing you that you don't put all your, your belief or doctrine in this incomplete statement. Rather, you must check out other statements or verses for it to be completed. Right? So, here's another. Oh, okay. Here's a rule of thumb muna. Never base your foundational beliefs on any verse that is unclear in any way if the verse is not absolutely clear. Don't begin your theological system there. Right? Diyan nagpo-fall o diyan bumabagsak ang maraming mga maraming mga uh, mga religions. Kaya sinasabi ng iba na bakit iba-iba ang paniniwala ng mga reliyon? Bakit iba-iba ang kanilang interpretation? Here, we are studying the law of interpretations. We're studying the science of interpreting the Bible, which is subok na. Okay? And you will make sense out of this, guys. You will just check check out and and see for yourself. Does it really make sense? Ito mga pinag-aaralan natin. You will. You will find sense to this, lalo na kung ikaw ay critical thinker din. So, if the verse is not absolutely clear, obviously, you don't begin and base your foundational theological system under there. Para ka nagtayo ng bahay. Na yung bahay, tinayo mo sa mga bulbs. ba? So, Hindi mo gagawin yan. Hindi mo itatayo yung bahay sa bulbs. Itatayo mo siya sa matigas na pundasyon. Alright? 
So that's just that's just a simple illustration. If there's a, if if the verse is absolutely not clear, don't begin your the theological system there. Hindi yan ang magiging basis mo or foundation mo. Eto, bigyan ko kayo ng sample. Maraming mga tao, they base their foundation of salvation. Again, so salvation is a big thing. It's a big doctrine. In fact, it is a very important doctrine na dapat settled tayong lahat at fixed. Dahil nakasalalay dito ang kaluluwa mo. Now, many people, many charismatics, no? yung sa mga Pentecostals, what they do is that they build their foundation upon this this verse na to. And if you ask them whenever they share the gospel, this is their favorite verse. Kung favorite verse natin is John 3.16, Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9, eto naman sila, Acts 2.38. Kasi ano ba sinasabi ng Acts 2.38? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You see here, in this verse, sinasabi dyan, repent and be baptized. Para saan? For the remission of sins. Oh, edi it seems na sinasabi dito na kailangan mo mag-repent at mabautismuhan para ikaw ay magkaroon ng remission of sins. Akala ko ba, it's by the blood of Jesus lang. Yun nga eh. They tried to build their foundation sa verse lang na to. Without cross-referencing. Without checking other subsequent details. Ang Book of Acts, tandaan po natin, no? sa mga hindi pa po familiar, the Book of Acts is called a transitional book. It means it's, transi it's transitioning from one, uh, from one event or dispensation to another. Etong panahon ni Jesus Christ, hindi parehas ang pinipreach ni Jesus Christ at ni John the Baptist sa preaching ni Paul ngayon sa panahon natin ngayon. You will notice si John the Baptist preaching din niya be baptized. Kaya nga siya tinawag na baptist eh. Hindi dahil siya ay nasa religion na baptist, pero dahil baptizer siya. No? So, binababtize niya yung mga converts nila. And it was part of their system. It was part of their, uh, uh, kumbaga, uh, following the Lord Jesus Christ and also in salvation uh, and in righteousness. So, just like Peter, si Peter, kasama siya ni Jesus Christ. Twelve apostles. Repent and be baptized ang preaching niya. Yan ang kanyang teaching. But you will notice, pagdating mo sa Acts 15, sa Acts 15, mapapansin mo nagkaroon pa sila ng meeting. Sa Acts 15, nagkaroon sila ng Apostles Meeting. O ba pag kunyari meron din pagkakaintindihan at hindi kayo magkasundo, lalo na kung meron kayong kumpanya, anong ginagawa nyo? O meeting tayo, pag-usapan natin tong issue na to, pag-usapan natin tong concern Kung bakit nagkakaiba-iba tayo. Ganun na nangyari sa Acts chapter 15. And si Peter mismo, guys, ang nag-lead nito. Etong sabi niya, Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. Sabi ni, ni, ni Peter dyan, Di ba ang usapan or ang parang alam natin, kailangan ng circumcision kasi nga Jews. Kailangan ng circumcision para tayo ay uh, ma-save. No? Bakit? May ibang nagtuturo by the grace of God lang. Ngayon, pumunta ang mga apostles sa Jerusalem at ang mga elders para isettle tong question na to. Alam mo ang kanilang uh, tawag dito, ang kanilang napagkasunduan Acts 15:11. But we, sila yan, we, we believe that through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. So there you go. It was settled by adding subsequently details that are not mentioned before. It was settled. They had a consensus. Alright? Kaya eventually, you will notice lalo na si Paul, which is our apostle, the apostle of the Gentiles, Clear na sa kanya, sa Ephesians, sa Philippians, sa Colossians, etc. Hanggang sa end ng kanyang book sa Philemon. Na it is by the grace of God that we are saved through faith. Hindi by circumcision, hindi by baptism, hindi by the law. You will notice that entirely. Ang problema nga, people. People with different 
different way of believing the Bible and different way of interpreting the Bible ay na- natitisod sa mga ganitong bagay. Kaya ngayon, hindi na ito dapat pinagdidibatian na sinasabi natin na, eh kasi paniniwala nila yan, respetuhin natin. Meron silang ganyang, uh, kumbaga, way of uh, approaching God. Eh mali nga yung way nila. Eh ngayon, if you will just critically think, hindi kompleto yung statement na yun sa Book of Acts. It has to have a subsequently added detail for them to understand that it is more clear sa iba pang mga books as you cross-reference from scripture to scripture. Okay? So that's that's the same with the, with the idea nung yun nga sa sa mga miracles, yung sa mga sa mga tongues, no, speaking in tongues, yung yung mga kakaibang mga mga uh, scenario nun sa Book of Corinthians. Merong merong po kasing nangyari na tawag nila is cessation. Nagsis na, nagsis na yung signs. And those signs were apparently for the Jews. It's not actually given or granted sa mga Gentiles para to believe. Tayo po, we believe through wisdom, no? Through explanation at itong mga pag-uusap natin. But they they believe signs. Ever since the Jews believe signs, for them to believe that it is from God. Ba? From Moses. Paano nila pinaniwalaan si Moses? They had to see Moses turn his staff into a serpent. Turn the water into blood. Turn, uh, kung bagay, yung mga iba pang mga scenario na nangyari doon sa Egypt, di ba? Yung plagues. They had to see that para sumunod sila kay Moses. Di ba? So, eventually, this changed. Dispensationally, this changed. That's how you do it. That's how the Bible is. Right? So, there's an initial statement by Apostle Peter, repent and be baptized. But the next statement of Apostle Peter, si Peter mismo to ang pinag-usapan natin. He's not contradicting himself. He's just learning. He's just eventually seeing new revelations. Okay? Yung nabanggit din natin sa Old Testament, no? hindi na-reveal sa mga Old Testament saints. Kaya hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na pareho ang salvation ng Old Testament sa New Testament. Old Testament, obviously, nag-offer ka, in offer main lamb, yung goats, bulls, and so on, para sa remission of sins. And nabago pa to, naging baptism. Okay? And eventually, nag-iiba siya. And ngayon, settled na until sa panahon natin ngayon sa church age, na ang salvation is by grace through faith. And then again, you will see this another change. No? Pag nag-rapture, at nag- napunta na tayo sa tribulation period, it becomes different na naman. Na, 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 na may mention na dito yung mark of the beast, na may mention na dito yung mga, mga instances about uh, about uh, works-based salvation na uli. Works, no? Hindi grace lang. It's works na. Alright? So, if you want more details to that, no, pinag-usapan natin yung sa end time series natin about sa tribulation period. So, I hope you get the idea. So, why would you base your theology on a verse with that merong po mga problema, di ba? At parang hindi siya settled pa. Hindi po ganun. Okay? So, that's that's a one good one good um, approach or law of hermeneutics. Subsequently added details. It's a good verse to start it when when it comes to salvation. He that had the Son had life and he that had not the Son of God had not life. It's very simple, di ba? Very simple. Every word that is in the verse, single syllable word, uh, you either have the Son or you don't. And uh, you, you don't have to worry about uh, being baptized, no, being, uh, being, how oh, dito being part of a religion or doing good works and so on and so forth. It's a good verse. How to do it? He that believeth in the Son had everlasting life. For you to have the Son, you have to believe on the Son. You have to believe on His finished work. You have to believe the gospel, right? It's furthermore, and uh, I mentioned the first uh, uh, Corinthians chapter fifteen. Kaya, May mga tao noon sinasabi, oh, well-versed ka, ang dami mo verses sinasabi, kailangan maging ganun kasi. Dahil kung hindi tayo ganun, we won't interpret the Bible properly. Yung iba parang na-intimidate pa, ang dami mo verse na binibigay. Hindi naman dahil nagyayabang tayo, but because we want to prove something na ito ay talagang basis. If you go to a law, at ikaw ay naging lawyer, what you do is you normally quote the article, article section, ganyan-ganyan, di ba? Kasi nga, you want to prove that what you're saying has a backup. No? Meron tayong backup verse, meron tayong backup na, 
na theology na hindi po gawa-gawa lang. Kaya it has to be like that. Kaya nga po, uh, uh, if you really, if you observe and you attend churches, I've, I've attended different kinds of churches, ano, uh, I'm happy to really hear a scriptural preaching. Hindi yung preaching na uh, umikot lang sa isang verse lang. It's okay, sometimes it happens. No? Pero pag yun lang lagi ang naririnig mo, parang talagang sabaw lang ang marit, ma- makukuha mo. Kumbaga sa pagkain, sabi ng Bible, may meat at may milk. Ito, meat to kapag may verses na supply, kapag puno siya ng mga doctrines. Okay? So that that's it uh, for that law. Let's proceed to another law. Tayo dun sa isang law na yun. The law of complete mention. Itong law of complete mention naman, this one tells you a very obvious idea. The Bible without any reference to anyone's church or tradition is God's complete revelation on anything important to our spiritual lives. So, sinasabi lang, the Bible without a ref- any reference, hindi na natin kailangan ng tradisyon, hindi natin kailangan ng scholar, para masabi natin ito ay kumpleto. The Bible itself is a complete revelation. The 66 book, 66 books is already a complete revelation. Dito na buo yung sinasabing na sola scriptura. Right? The law of complete mention. The Bible, sabi nga ng isang preacher, is our sole and final authority in all matters of faith and practice. If this is what you believe, then it has to be, uh, you, you put your faith dito. Kaya sinabi ng Proverbs 30 verse 5, Every word of God is pure, and it is a shield unto him that put their trust in it. Kung ang Bible, <laughs> kung ang Bible natin ay kulang-kulang, kung ang Bible natin ay corrupt, therefore, it is hard to put your faith dyan. You will doubt your book. You will doubt God. Kasi you have this idea in the back of your mind na hindi ito kompleto, hindi ito perfect. Why would you believe and put all your heart there? So that's that's an idea for us to think about. It should be your sole authority in all matters of faith and practice. According as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him that had called us to glory and virtue, whereby we uh, are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. So here you go. 39 books in the Old Testament. 27 books in the Old Testament. I mean in the New Testament. Precious, precious and exceeding promises. Law of complete mention. Your Bible. The book has, be, has to be your full authority. Again, ano, not the pastor, not the leader, not... not not the person, not the organization, or yung, yung pagpupulong o mga scholar. No, not them. It's your book. You have it in your hands. You could, you could have it in your hands. You could hold it in your hands. Let's go to the next one. The law of context. Ang law of context, ang sinasabi nito is very obvious. One of the ways to wrongly divide the word of truth is to take the verse out of its context. Okay? Once a verse is separated from its context, you can make you can make it to mean anything. Tandaan nyo to guys. You can, you can produce any doctrine, you can produce any teaching in the Bible. Just take it out of context. <laughs> uh, may, may isang kasabihan eh. Uh, I think kay Dr. Rachman ko narinig yun. A context, uh, uh, a text without a text that is a pretext, oh, I forgot the exact words. Maybe I'll remember it later on. The verses surrounding the passage under consideration. So you have to consider all the verses and all the issues and concerns being tackled in the context. When I say context, in boom chapter. You're reading the whole chapter. You're read, reading the whole book. Alright? That's the context. One of the ways to wrongly divide, yung sabi ko sa inyo, is to take the verse out of context. So, the old saying, ito, ito pa rin yung nasa isip ko kanina, a text without a context is a pretext. Ang sinasabi dyan is that kapag merong text na kinote sa'yo at wala ito sa context, it's just a pretext. Ibig sabihin, it's just a part of the real, of the whole thing. Hindi siya kompleto. Diba? Law of complete mention, then napapasok yung iba. So, the law of context, just the idea. All scripture, sabi ng Bible, is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine, for proof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Notice, all scripture. All scripture. Not just your opinion, not your, not your intellect, 
It's the scripture. Scripture to scripture. You compare scripture to scripture. It's God who interprets. It's not man. So how to interpret what God said? You compare what he say and make sense out of it. And with this laws of hermeneutics that we are learning, you will see and you will find out that yes, it does make sense. It does make sense. Okay? So, hindi peraso lang, hindi ka peraso ng scripture lang ang magiinterpret. It's scripture to scripture, the entire scripture. Kaya na, na, isang magandang bagay din. Ninety-five percent of the scriptures na mga na mga na ng uh, tinawag nga siyang common bible ang King James tinawag siyang uh, textus receptus kasi kumpleto po at maraming sumasang ayon ng mga scriptures sa kanya kahit copies pa yan no? marami po siyang talagang sinasang ayunan ng mga text at pasok na pasok po siya so the law of context when studying the passage you have to ask these questions who is speaking to whom is he speaking sino ka usap niya When is it addressed? Ma simple things na pwede mong isipin when trying to um, talk about this. First Corinthians 10:32. Sang napadan ng verse to tell you na ang kausap po ng Bible ay hindi laging ikaw. Hindi laging Christians ang kausap niya. Sabi ng Bible, give none offense either to the Jews. Majority actually ng Bible ang kausap ay mga Jews. Nor to the Gentiles. Gentiles is non-Jews. And then to the Church of God. The Church of God is not a religion. It is a body. The body of Christ. Lahat ng saved believers. Pinag-usapan natin ito dun sa wedding feast. At ito nga. The Bride of Christ. Siya po itong Church of God. Hindi yan yung Iglesia ni Cristo. Kung ginawa niya Iglesia ni Cristo, hindi naging God na si Jesus. Di ba? Marami silang mga ano dyan. Uh, uh, Kakatisuran. So there you go. Who is it speaking to? Sino kausap niya? When is it addressed? And so on and so forth. So here, you find Jews, Gentiles, in the Church of God. You have to remember that. When is it addressed? Anong panahon? Anong dispensation? Obviously, pag binasa mong book of Genesis, hindi mo i-apply na kailangan pumasok ka sa arko para ikaw ay maligtas at may, may malaking ula na darating. Hindi ganun. Kasi nga, it is, it is all written in the book of Genesis at the time of Noah. Right? Iba rin yung, yung preaching nga, yung sinabi natin sa New Testament, to nandito pa si Jesus Christ at mga mga, uh, mga apostles niya. At iba rin yung mangyayari kapag sa, ano na, kapag sa uh, tribulation period. I was I was actually in the book of Isaiah na ngayon sa aking Bible reading. Makikita ko doon, it's, it's mostly talking about the future. Millennium. Millennium naman. Na kung saan yung 1,000 years the reigning ni Christ. Hindi ko pwede niya apply yun ngayon. I-apply ko sa akin, mababasa ko yung mga wolf at saka mga sheep nagsasama. Ang mga bata, nilalaro nila yung mga, mga leon at saka mga ahas. Hindi ko pwedeng gawin yun ngayon. Pag ginawa ko ngayon yun, I'll be silly. I'll be, I'll be crazy. Okay? Meron pang part sa Luke, uh, Mark 16.16, ano, sabi, repent and be baptized. Okay, sige, uh, pipiliti mo yung repent and be baptized. Basahin mo yung mga susunod na verses. Sabi, uminom ng lason yung mga apostles, hindi namatay. Nagpakagat sa mga makamandag na mga ahas, hindi namatay. Magagawa mo ba yun ngayon? Meron mga ibang crazy people na gumagawa yun ngayon. Akala nila, meron silang gift. You can just search all over YouTube, no? Makikita mo yung mga kalukuhan nito, mga ito. Nung nakagat sila mismo sa bibig, no? Nahilo-hilo pa siya. Okay, nakakatawa, nakakatawa lang talaga yung mga nangyari sa kanila. There, sabi nga ni Dr. Rahman, not, uh, not all clowns are in the circus. Okay? So, marami kayong mga clowns na makikita even in churches. Okay? So, there you go. Law of Context. This is a wonderful uh, study, no? Yung study natin about the end times. Nagkaroon na tayo, tatapos natin end time series na to. You will find that, that the Bible is not a simple book. You will find that the Bible has a lot in it. A lot. Sa prophecy, sa doctrines. And hindi lang siya talaga puro God is love, no? Hindi lang siya puro uh, uh, yung prosperity. It's not all that. There's a lot more to it na pwede natin matutunan. Okay? So that's the law of context.